Hello everyone and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Leading on Mondays. My name is Flo Long and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And I'm joined by my friend and colleague from Maxwell Leadership uh, Organization, right? Because we just renamed from the John Maxwell team to Maxwell Leadership, uh, Madalina Ginescu. Hi Madalina, how are you today? Hello everybody. Well, I'm a little ill, so I'm trying my best to uh, to make sure that my voice is working. So. I'm sorry for this uh, inconvenient, but I'm ready to ask you some questions related to leadership. Perfect. So I'll do a lot of, yeah, I'll do most of the talking, right? So you're going to save your voice. Yes, that, that's that's why I'm. Uh, it's good that I can ask you questions and you can talk. Uh, okay. So Florin, if you're ready, I will get to my first question that we have for you today is uh, related to the, um, to the leader. Uh, how can uh, how can a leader make sure that the team gets to the target point? So if you can tell a little bit about that. Uh, absolutely. So we're doing this kind of uh, uh, on the back end of uh, leading through difficult times, right? Because we've done three or four shows about this, and now we're kind of trying to summarize that. And so being in difficult times or not, uh, leaders need to have what we call to be catalysts on the team, right? Mm -hmm. So what we mean by that, this is one of uh, John Maxwell's 17 uh, laws of teamwork. And he says that these people are, are people that make things happen, right? So in times like this, and, and even in, in you know normal times, we, we need people that make things happen, right? Um, many times we see leaders that are what we call to be um, travel agents. So they want to send people where they've never been before. But what we yeah. want to say, well, as leaders, we don't want to be travel agents. We want to be guides, right? We want to go there first, experience, and then take our people with us, right? So every leader, in order for them to take their teams to the target and to uh, achieve the objective, what they need to do is they need to have these kind of people on the team. They need, first of all, to be one of those catalysts because, as we said, in the workplace, people look up to the leader, right? And when they look up to the leader, they do what the leader does. And if the leader doesn't not take action and is more of a positional leader and they just kind of give instructions, what happens is that people will say, well, you know, you, you never done this. You don't even know how this is going to be done, right? And so that, that way we, we lose that kind of trust with our teams. So mm -hmm. first thing first, like leaders need to be doers. Uh, there's a reason why we say lead by example, right? Or there is a reason why we follow leaders that walk their talk, right? It's not just about us giving, uh, you know, advice or, or giving, you know, tips. So it takes a leader that takes action. So first thing first would be to have someone on the team that takes action. And, and, and you know, you as a leader be the first, but then also have different kind of, uh, of, of players on your team. And um, I think you, you you know this from from again this law of uh, of um, you know catalyst. There, there are different type of of people in our teams. And and I remember a time when I was playing soccer or or football here in Europe, and I was one of those people that you in times of uh, you know crisis or in times of uh, pressure you wouldn't want to give me the ball because I was not skilled to do anything with it. And and, and, and but I knew that. So I, I did not even require the ball, right? So when we look at what John Maxwell says about this uh, this law of the catalyst and what leaders uh, should do, they should know who they have on the team. And he says that there are three types of people. They are people that, you know, don't want the ball and they shouldn't have it, right? So like me, you know, I didn't want the ball and, and I didn't want my teammates to give me the ball because I would definitely fail. I, I was not up for the challenge, right? So in times like this, you know, we have to just acknowledge you know, this is this is beyond me, right? And that's great because um, what is worst is that we think we can do it and we, you know, we, we fail, right? And we fail our leader and our team. So so that would be kind of the first thing, type of, of people that a leader needs on the team in order for them to, you know, um, you know, achieve a goal for the team. The second type of people are people that should not have the, the ball, but they don't know that, right? People that think they are, you know, up for the challenge, but they're actually not. And also, the leader needs to know who are those kind of people on our teams, right? And the third, you know, type of people that we really need on, on the team 
are people that should have the ball and they can do something with the ball uh, because they raise to you know the challenge of the hour. So if we're able as a leader to identify these kind of people who are uh, you know the people on our team that fall in these three categories and and who are those that will take actions immediately, that's when we're able to set our team up for success. Uh, that brings me to one example. I don't know if uh, if um, you were thinking about that. Do you know that sometimes in a team there are people that should have the ball, but they don't want the ball? Uh, absolutely, yeah. Do you have examples like this? Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes what happens is that we need some someone else from the outside to actually see something in ourselves that we don't see. And, and this is one of the stories that I share when people ask me, Florian, how did you start on this leadership journey? How did you become interested in leadership? And, um, you know, you might not know this story, but I was that was in 2012 when I was a, a team manager on, you know, on a company in Romania and our CEO of the company actually during our conference our management conference gave everyone a book by john maxwell and that book uh, was called 360 degree leader which meant that you can influence the organization from wherever you are right and so that introduced me to to leadership and i got interested into leadership but what made really the shift for me to see myself as a leader was one of my mentors you know our section manager you know in in, in my company there what happened is that he saw something in me that I could not see myself. So definitely we have people. I mean, I was looking for a, a technical career and he saw in me something that I could not see. He said, Florian, you're good with people. We think that you would be better as a team leader and team manager rather than being a technical expert. So I was one of those people that I should have had the ball but I, I didn't want it or I, I didn't feel that I was good enough to have it. So definitely <laughs> there are people like that on the team that we as leaders, we need to be able to, you know, borrow a little bit of our trust and our, uh, you know, our um, confidence to them, right? So we need to help them see themselves as someone that could play the ball. Wow, that's, uh, that's good. I didn't know the, the story. So thanks for sharing, Florin. Um, uh, that brings me to the another to another question because you were talking about uh, three type three types of people the people that would that want to have the ball but they shouldn't have the ball and I think uh, because this is a metaphor for anybody in an organization or every leader you will have people in your team <clears throat> that they want to do let's say bigger things with more responsibility but you as the leader you see that they are not capable of uh, doing that yet so this is the the, the key question the, the key word yet mm -hmm. um, so how can you uh, if you can share with us Florin uh, if uh, I am a leader and I have this kind of people in my team they want to take more responsibility but they are not let's say capable uh, yet to take one big role uh, in front of them. How can I deal with these kind of people and make sure that they are not offended and they understand the situation and it's uh, it's part of a process and they need, need to be more prepared. So how can I as a leader um, discuss with these people to let them know that um, this can be done in the future, in the near future when they are prepared? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and this is one of the challenges that uh, we face as leaders, right? You know, how do we communicate with one of my mentors saying kind candor, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm giving you, when we talk about feedback, right? It's almost like we need to give that person some kind of realistic feedback about where they're at and, and also build with them together a plan for them to reach the level that they need to be at in order to, you know, occupy that position or take that challenge. So this is where really our emotional intelligence, our communication skills, our empathy skills really play, play a, a big role as leaders because it's very difficult for us to communicate that without for the person to, to, to feel offended. But I think what, riddles, what leaders can do in a very good way is that um, if you're honest and, and you have an honest conversation with the person you know sharing what you see and, and sharing that this is as you said this is not a position for you yet 
But what I can see is that we have this project here. And if you'd be willing to take this project, and if the outcome of that project would be the one that we both hope it is, then that will put you in a position to be able to take the other position, right? So it, how we do that, uh, it, it actually matters a lot because if we communicate based always on the other person expectation, that's when we're able to connect with the person without offending them. It's very, it's very easy for us, and this is one of the challenges we all face, it's very easy for us to, you know, to focus on the way we want to be communicated with. You know, there is this golden rule who says, treat people the way you want to be treated. But we know that there is a platinum rule who says that treat people the way they want to be treated. Oh, yes. Right? Exactly. So, so if, for example, I like direct feedback, maybe the other person does not like that. So if I'm trying to communicate with my team member in the same way that I like to be communicated with, then I might offend the person. So this is very important for us to be able to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and say, what I'm going to say right now, might this be perceived as, as a you know, critic, criticism? What I'm going to say to this person right now, how, how would they perceive it? If I will be on the other side of the table or on the other side of, of the screen or, or on the other side of the phone call, what would I hear? You know, how would I perceive that? And if we're able to make that connection between why we're saying what we're saying and what the bigger purpose is, and, and then always end with a plan, like even though we might risk offending the person, but if we have a plan and we can show, okay, so this is where we are right now, but what I really see in you is that you can become the kind of person that could take that challenge. And here is my plan. Why don't we take this project? Why don't we make this uh, you know, a test project and see if you can handle that? And, and if with my help, we can do this together. And then that will put you in a position to be able to, you know, take more responsibility. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. And I think about one example, uh, well, an additional example for people who would like to take, uh, take a role in the future, but they are not prepared yet. Uh, they should consider of shadowing. Shadowing, it's an activity where you stay very close to somebody who already does the same thing as you would like to. And you can learn from straight from their experience. They can share with you and they can teach you. They can mentor you to become as good as they are uh, in, in, the, in the process. So it's good for you to, to take into consideration this shadowing activity. And I would sure. continue, um, uh, Florin, with another question related to the attitude. Because mm -hmm. you were talking about the leaders and you were talking about different people in the team and how an, uh, a leader should um, act and should, um, let's say, discuss with people in their team depending on the roles or on the people's wants, the people's mm -hmm. desire. So what can you tell us about the winning attitude of a leader in this situation? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, attitude is actually what people see. When, when, when we look at someone, um, we, we might put different words to that. But most of the things that we admire of other people is attitude. So whenever I take, I take leaders through uh, the Developing the Leader Within You 2.0 program. So this is one of John Maxwell's books that we are both certified to use. So when, we take, when, when I take leaders through this journey, or, or, on the chapter on attitude, I ask them to just take a moment and think about People, one or two person, you know, maybe a, a acquaintances or friends or leaders, people that they admire, right? And put those names on, on a piece of paper. And then think about what they admire about that person. And most often than not, what comes out is things that have to do with attitude. You know, they like that people are positive. They like that people are solution-oriented. They like that people are walking their talk, right? And all of these things have to do with attitude, right? So when we look at other people's uh, and, and when we admire, is we admire attitude. So in, in, in our offices, in, in the workplace, we are the leader. So people look up to us for the attitude. And what we say is that leaders set the stage for the interaction between team members and for the action that the team members are gonna take. So 
if me as a leader have maybe a pessimistic uh, attitude, I complain about stuff, then what would you expect my team to do? If me as a leader speak in a certain way about the customer or or on on other leader or maybe our boss, what would you expect our team to do? And, I, and I've been in meetings like that where leaders just say, well, you know, let me tell you what I believe about this. And so next thing you know, you hear that at the coffee machine and, and people talking about that just because they heard it from the leader and they thought, well, this is probably the attitude we should have. And, and this is actually, it's very interesting you ask that because this is what we see most often the challenge in, in internal you know, interactions and communication. So whenever companies have problems with you know, departments working in silos, what happens is that you hear in the leader's verbiage, in, in the leader's words, you hear that they're talking about them and the others, right? We and them, we and them. And so if I'm a new employee and I just come into the company and I join the team and then I follow my, I shadow someone, which is exactly what I've done for the first few months when I, when I joined, you know, Volvo Cars here in Sweden, I shadow someone for a few months and then they ask me, what, what should I do? Well, sorry, I ask them, what should I do? You say, well, just follow this person. Whatever he does, then you follow him. And then this is what I've done. And then I just learned how we talk about other departments. I just learned about how we talk about other projects, how we talk about, you know, projects and, and project leaders. And I didn't even knew these people, but I already had an image. I already have a, a, a vocabulary. I already have a language to describe those people. So that's why attitude, it's one of the most important things. Does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, and uh, um, I I have an example way back when I was a little girl. And this is, I, I really want to share with the people listening to us now because it's related to leaders and how, what is their attitude uh, upon all kinds of people that they interact with. So I have an example when I was very, very little and uh, near my house, there was a store, a marketplace, yes, where, mm -hmm. where I had to, well, when I when I got few money, I went to buy something sweet, sweet for me, like mm -hmm. sweets. And um, I can definitely tell, and it's not my only opinion, that the, the, the woman who sell uh, on that marketplace, she didn't have a very good attitude towards me. And I can tell that it wasn't only towards me, but uh, related to people who are not, let's say, her target people. And especially children, they, f for her, we didn't, let's say, we, we, we didn't bring much to the store because we had few money, we, we buy something small and that's it. And that was for me an important lesson because um, I remember that uh, even when I was older, I wouldn't go there. If even if I had a lot of money, I wouldn't go there to buy something from her because of the, that kind of attitude. And it's really important the way we treat any kind of people. And I know that I I remember that Sir uh, Richard Branson is having a very famous quote: "Treat your employees very, very good because the way you treat your employees, they will go further and they will treat your clients." So they actually, they respect their employees because when they respect the employees, then the employees definitely will, will give this attitude forward and it will have the same attitude to the clients. And we need, we need to, I also remember another uh, example. There was, um, there was a, a test, an exam in a, in a psychology uh, class, I think. And the teacher actually had one question with one point in the exam, in the final exam. And they were asking the he was asking the student what the students what is the name of the lady who cleans, uh, yeah, with the cleaning lady. And uh, maybe not psychology, but something related to medical care. So things mm -hmm. related to that, I remember now. And afterwards he said why is this question important because when you are working with people you need to understand that everybody should be treated in a good attitude so even if it's not a good let's say inter it, it's a person who cleans the room okay it's not something from a ceo position but it's somebody who if he if she doesn't clean the room 
that would be chaos around you. So you need to respect okay. that person also. And that was a very important lesson for me. And um, every time I'm interacting with people and I'm, 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 I'm meeting somebody new, I try to be uh, very friendly and with a good attitude because even though it's a, not a leading position, like, okay, we can imagine, but think about that person. If the, the person wasn't in your life, chaos will be around you. You can, you can imagine <laughs> if the cleaning lady or the cleaning company wouldn't clean your office, imagine how that would be. So you really need to understand to respect everybody regardless of their position. And I think this is the, the leadership in, 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 this, in this situation is treat everybody the way they want to be treated. Yes. Absolutely. And, yeah. And treat everybody with respect regardless of their position. Um, you you have a really good point there because you don't even know who the person is. Like I I remember that yeah, example yeah. of of you know at, being asked uh, you know what what is the name of the cleaning lady and and many many of the students ask you know is this gonna count? Yes, of course it's gonna count, yeah, right? Yeah. Because you're, you're not in the medical business, you're in, in the people business. In the people so, business, yes, right? exactly. So, so the challenge are... is that we don't even know who the person is, right? And if we have uh, an attitude which which is you know of superiority for example you know towards that kind of person you know that says a lot about us so so here is where it comes to the soft skills and the soft side you know and the and the, the values of the leader and i remember also simon sinek shared something similar to what you just shared from richard branson he said that if you if you put your customer first it means that you put your employees at least second right yeah, so so that makes a lot of sense in what you just shared if we take care of our people and if we have the right attitude in the workplace you know our people will do anything else than do do nothing else than just copy and model that attitude towards our clients so that's why in in times of crisis like in times of challenging times what happens is that a crisis or, or a challenging time is a magnifier right so whatever was going on in the team and in the team dynamics before that, you know, this will, will just be magnified and multiplied, right? So that's why in times of crisis or in difficult times when the leaders are needed the most, that's where attitude is the difference, difference maker, right? Because attitude might not be the whole thing, but many times is the difference between winning and losing in a situation. Yes, yes, definitely. So I, I have this example in my life and I want I try my best to treat everybody with kindness. Well, it's not always the good, let's say the the good attitude. Sometimes I don't feel very good. Uh, I have a bad attitude and I can, yeah, I can treat somebody with uh, disrespect, uh, but I try my best to, to, to be as good as I can. And that brings me to the question that we can discuss further uh, next time, uh, Florin. Um, related to this attitude and related, related to how can we make sure the environment in our team is an environment of, uh, of safety and people can come to us to discuss the good things and the bad things in the team, what they are going through. So next time I would like to discuss with you and you can share the, your experience. How can we as a leader create a safe environment for our team members? And Absolutely. especially if we can, uh, if we can uh, make sure that we treat our employer employees better and then we can make sure that by this attitude, we definitely have a good relationship with the clients in this situation. So I'm looking forward, if it's okay with you, to discuss absolutely. how to create a safe environment for the teams. Yeah, absolutely. So we're definitely going to talk about that and we're going to talk about how to create this, what we call psychological safety, right? And I have some example right. to share. I, I read a, an, an article in a study that Google has done a, a couple of years ago in, in, with their team. So I'm so excited to share about that. But just before we close, I think you made a yeah. really good point when when you know when we were summarizing about the attitude and you said maybe sometimes i don't feel like you know uh, you know yes. having the the right kind of attitude and this is where leaders actually when well, great leaders make the difference this is where you really can spot the great leader because leaders see possibilities where others see problems 
you know, this is about attitude, this is about mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Leaders are able to encourage people when they don't feel like, or they don't even believe in those people, right? But that's what leaders do. And also leaders are, uh, you know, are, are just, they're motivating other people, even if they don't feel like. So when people are able to do this, right? When people are able to motivate when others discourage, that's when magic happens. That's where, where really our attitude is the difference maker. So I'm, I'm glad that you were able to bring that just you know, personal experience because this is exactly, if we're able as a leader to you know, do things that we need to do despite of anything else that happens in our life, that's when, that's when we become those role models for our people. So um, as I share, usually it takes a level of vulnerability. We don't want to fake it, right? <laughs> but we don't want to to be to be the you know the complainer and one of my mentors says that in the moment where you become a leader you have given up your your right to complain and who wants to be on on a complainer's team yeah <laughs> probably no one right not me at least i don't want to be on a complainer's <laughs> team i want to actually i want to get far away from that kind of person but I think it's another question here uh, we can discuss. Okay, everybody wants to complain, or at least they have some motives to complain. But mm -hmm. we need to understand, as you said, Florin, we need to understand you shouldn't, as a leader, you shouldn't complain in front of your team. But let's discuss next time what would be one solution for anybody who has a complaint and they cannot complain in front of the people they are leading to because they we have I, I can definitely think of one example for them to as a tool okay I, I i need to get this out of my my mind and my body yeah but i cannot do it in front of my people because then i demotivate them what is the solution for that? So I, I'm looking forward to discussing in our next meeting. Uh, this too, how can we uh, yeah, get it out from our system and how can we make sure that when we are in front of people, we are good. Yeah, we are so good that's to what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. But a simple answer is to hire you, to have a coach. Yeah, that's right? one. That's a simple answer, but we're gonna, we're gonna you know, develop that. So exactly. that was it. Yeah, that was it. Thank you for thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure sharing this. And we're gonna get back to our normal leadership uh, topics. So next week we're gonna talk about how to create uh, that kind of safe environment in our teams and and uh, the psychological safety that we all need in order to perform well. And I'm gonna be more than happy to share some ideas with you. And I look forward to see you next Monday. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you for joining. Be safe. Bye. Bye bye.